Implantology has been officially recognized as a form of treatment since 1982. Tooth implants are artificial tooth roots. They mostly have a screw-shaped or cylindrical design. They are implanted into the jaw bones as a replacement for lost tooth roots. Here one can see an implant within a sterile package, the glass bottle. With the help of a conversion rod, the implant is removed using an insertion instrument. The animation illustrates the insertion instrument, conversion rod and implant. After positioning, the conversion rod is separated from the implant which remains in the bone. There are various implant systems available. However, differences between the various systems available in the market are meaningless to the patient because all these systems are very well developed after decades of competition. Scientific studies over the last 25 years have demonstrated that implants have a very high success rate. Ten years after a successful healing process, over 90% of implants are still in use and functioning. By comparison, after 10 years, conventional bridges have a success rate of about 80%. If a tooth rescue is attempted by filling the root and it's not performed by an endodontist, the success rate goes down to 50% after 10 years. These numbers clearly demonstrate that implants are superior to conventional dentures, especially in terms of longevity. Despite all these developments, some patients are still unsure about getting a tooth implant because they've heard or read about allergies caused by titanium tooth implants. Respectable specialist literature does not recognize titanium allergies. Therefore, the statement, I can't tolerate implants, is untrue, even though some patients do suffer the loss of an implant. So why does this false belief in titanium allergy exist? In the early days of implantology, practitioners weren't aware of the importance of a thorough cleanup of the mouth. What does thorough cleanup mean? Wherever there's caries, it needs to be treated. Any periodontitis should be eliminated, loose fillings and or crowns should be changed. Nor should there be any type of infection present, such as one caused by an incomplete root canal treatment. Only when the mouth is completely free of any inflammation should an implantation be performed, as that's the only way to get good results. Implantology is a very lucrative branch within the dental industry, and for this reason implants were often resorted to quickly and less lucrative, more basic treatments were avoided. This is why implants have been placed in contraindicated patients in the past. Such false indicators can frequently lead to implant loss after weeks, months, or even years. Frequently, the patient was then told, you don't tolerate titanium. This is how the idea of titanium allergy emerged. Medicine has studied this and we now recognize the necessity of a thorough and extensive cleanup, and now the loss of an implant has become a rarity. Implants are a reliable and proven solution, so long as the correct indicators are used. Despite appropriate planning and execution, an implant can occasionally fail to heal appropriately and can require removal at some stage. While this is disappointing, it is very rare and doesn't lead to any significant physical damage. The ensuing bone defect is sealed by new bone formation. A new implant is possible if desired by the patient. A conventional denture is also possible after the loss of an implant.